And then I might say, uh, okay, I want to cut a section of that rectangle off. And back here on the back side, I have an invisible side to this that's in perspective. So I make a similar line around this side. And I connect those lines. Okay? And I've just kind of cut this sliver off the top of that rectangle. What I've left is something a little bit more like a car shape, maybe, or something. Okay, then I might come in here on top of this, and I might say I want kind of a trapezoid shape to define the cab for that car. So I, maybe I build another rectangle up there, and I cut it into a trapezoid shape. Okay, and I just kind of shave that down, right, and blend that in. Okay, and then I decide, let's just not make a car, let's make something really cool, like uh, some kind of a big weapon on the front of this car, because weapons are always fun. In case you're driving down the highway and you get attacked, you can deploy your weapon. So I might, you know, start with a prism, okay, up here. And we'll give it a little bit of form and a little bit of thickness. And then we'll cut some, you know, jaws into that. Right, now I've got this big apparatus that will attach to the front of my car. Okay, so I'm just, I'm taking basic geometric shapes and I just continue to build them up. All right, we put some headlights on here. Maybe some headlights up here. Okay. Now I want to come in here and do a, uh, maybe a, we'll, we'll put in a wheel. Okay, now this is a really important tip. A lot of people don't understand this, but if I want to put a circle on something in perspective, it's an ellipse, of course. But the minor axis of that ellipse, okay, here's an ellipse, minor axis, okay, major axis. The minor axis of that ellipse always follows the perspective line as if that was the axle of that circle. So if I wanted to find the center of this side of this cube and recede that back to my perspective point here and put an ellipse on that, the minor axis of my ellipse would follow that perspective line. You see that? I see people get that wrong all the time. I see professional sketch artists get that wrong all the time. You notice it when it's wrong. You see a car and the wheels case kind of weird. It doesn't really look like it fits. It's because they don't follow that rule. It doesn't feel right when you first start doing it. But the minor axis is that perspective line. Then you've got to practice a little bit to figure out which size ellipse to make it, right? This would look funny for how big I made the side of that cube. This would look funny, right? So you have to kind of evenly space it in there. Okay, minor axis, ellipse. Roughly the same dimension here, as here, as here, as here. Minor axis goes right through the perspective line. And you can make another one with the minor axis going through perspective line, and that cuts a hole in it. Okay, does that make sense? A lot of people get that wrong. All right. So, I want to put wheels on this thing. I've got my perspective lines kind of coming in here. So I might first start by cutting some of the form out. So I just follow that cut out like that. Then I might come in here and put another one a little bit farther out. Maybe put it down a little bit so we get a great big knobby wheel on here. Make it playful. And I can also put that, those ellipses off center, and I get things to look like hubs. You see that? Just by making it off center a little bit. And give it a little traction. Some kind of mechanism holding it up. All right, let's make this one bigger just for fun. Right, or I might 
choose to come in here and put another one over on this side. This one's so big you might be able to see it a little bit there. Okay. See how that works? Minor axis. But the two axes are slightly different on these because this is farther away from me, right? This line still has to recede to the same point way over here somewhere, okay, off the page. Uh, or I could come in and do, um, you know, maybe I want to do an overlay here. And I say I want um, this to be more like tank treads. We'll do some kind of, um, you know, I don't know, giant tank. Like the Battle Cat. Anybody? Thundercats? Anybody watch Thundercats? Okay. So I can do an overlay on that and I can say that's, we really would just want to make this look like uh, a tank tread. So I can take this to my to my manager now and I can say, all right, how about tank treads? And I can try a lot of different things really quick, okay? That perspective line is off. But that's better. Okay. Ellipsis on Boolean objects is how you sketch. You just continue to build it up, okay? All right, questions about those things. Talked about the tools, why the blue pencil is valuable, a lot of different line thicknesses. Talk about making lines, think about your body positioning, your kinesthetics there, make a straight line by moving your paper a lot, staying up on top of your page. Talked about perspective, just basic, gave you a crash course on two point perspective work to build a cube. Then we talked about taking cubes and circles and shapes and just adding them to one another to make forms. You can take any object you want to make, think about it as a form, cylinder, the top cut off, smaller cylinder, I draw a center line between those two, I could put this in perspective, okay? Anything is like that. Questions on, so far, on those kind of sketch techniques? Something that wasn't clear. Well, the main thing I wanted to talk about was practicing, okay? So you practice your speed, you practice getting your lines straight, um, shooting through a certain point. I um, wanted to talk about um, giving everybody uh, an assignment in practice and in speed, okay? So we're at uh, quarter after, right? 20 after? We're wrapping up. So this is what I'd like everybody to do. Um, I used to do this when uh, I was doing toy design. It's important to have a lot of like stimulation around you all the time because you need to be thinking of creative things. So just sitting down and staring at a white piece of paper is really hard to come up with a new idea. Um, I would ride the train uh, to work. That was partly just so I could sit there with a sketch pad and look out the window and stuff is moving by very quickly. Gives you a lot of ideas and I would just sketch and sketch and sketch on the way to work. Um, or uh, you go to the museum. Art museum is a great place to do that. There's a lot of input and stimulation around you visually and just sort of thematically, metaphorically and a good place to just sketch and sketch and sketch. Sometimes what I would do though is um, just use the television. It's a really easy way to do it. So I'd sit with a big pad of paper and my blue pencil and I would just turn on the TV. And I had, you know, 300, you know, sketches to do for the next day for a big presentation for a new, you know, outdoor girls play pattern product or something. And so I would turn the TV on and I'd watch that channel that came up until I had an idea for a new product. It didn't have to be directly related to that channel, but I just let myself watch and think about what was going on there until it gave me an idea for a product, okay? 30 seconds, another 30 seconds to draw it out. You flip to the next channel. Then you do it on the next channel, okay? Flip to the next channel, and you have to watch that channel until you come up with something that's a new idea for a toy, okay? It could be totally unrelated, right? You could be watching soap operas, and you could be, oh, you know, somebody is crying, and you could be, okay, how about, you know, a, uh, a girl's toy that, uh, you know, makes fun of other girls for crying, right? And it's like uh, Simon Says, Cry Game, based on emotion, emotional manipulation of our adolescent 
girls or something, right? Terrible idea, right? But it might get people thinking in a meeting if I present it the next day. So I sketch it up. What does this look like? And, and then uh, we go to the next channel, right? And it's a cartoon. And I think girls play patterns, cartoons. What could we do with that, you know? Um, that reminds me of Thundercats because I was just talking about it. And maybe we do a girls skew for Thundercats. And, you know, Chitara is a pretty cool character, right? And so we do a whole Chitara brand line. And I write down, let's do this uh, giant, you know, defense weapons or something. Somebody, surely somebody in here appreciates Thundercats. I'm making myself look really dorky if nobody else appreciates Thundercats. Go ahead. Okay. And so uh, um, when you get done with, you know, your 30 or 40 channels, depending on, you know, how uh, big of a selection you have, you've got a bunch of ideas there and you use that input to do so. So what you're really practicing there is speed of getting an idea down on paper. You're not really practicing your illustration. You're not even really practicing your ideation. You're really just practicing your, your brain dump, your idea to visual, okay? And so that's the assignment. I want you guys to sit in front of the TV with your white paper and your blue pencil or your, your design journals. And I want you to um, do 40 sketches, okay? The sketches should be no more than two minutes a piece, a minute if you can do it, okay? Um, you can even set a little, you know, chest timer or your iPhone or something to give you a one minute kind of repeating alarm. And, uh, and you can watch the channel as long as it takes to get the idea, but once you get the idea, don't spend more than a minute or two doing the sketch for it, okay? Flip to the next channel, then to the next channel, and I want you to do that until you have 40, you know, sketches, 40 ideas for something. Uh, in your blue line, it doesn't have to be all your black and everything like that, right? Just this to this level, okay? Concept. You can go in here and write, write notes, or you can show actions, you know, um, if you need it to get the idea across, right? Okay, any questions about that? 40 quick sketches for ideas of toys, or products, okay? Bring those next week. We'll talk about a couple more areas of design. We're going to get into um, talking about context and motion. And then we're going to kind of pull all this together into a more complex thing. So send me an email if you have any questions or thoughts. And uh, Dr. Romani's got a moment left here. So. Thanks, Jason. Mm -hmm.